Hi, I'm Doug Hansel, one of the product designers here at Avid. Many of you have told us about your need to deliver surround sound, or at the very least, monitor surround sound in your edit suite. Today, we're going to have a look at some of the new features in Media Composer, Newscutter, and Symphony dealing with surround sound. First and foremost, let's talk about capturing the material into the system. So as before, we have a capture tool that allows us to go in and capture audio and video, but now you'll notice that I have some new features here. I can select stereo pairs like before, or I can actually tag something as surround, be it 5-1 or 7-1. And you'll notice also there's a couple different surround channel layouts here, SMPTE or film. And so if I do that, I've tagged channels 1 through 6 in this case as surround channels. So what that means is, is I take a master clip now with this tagging I can actually edit that into a surround track. So sure enough I now have the ability to create a surround track in the timeline either 5-1 or 7-1. So not only can I capture like that any type of ingest I have the ability to tag channels on the way in or if I forget to or I want to change my mind I can do it uh, after the fact with modify. I can go in and set the multi-channel audio and in this case I've got the same interface where I can say no this master clip actually has 5-1 SMPTE channel order for its audio channels and just like that I've modified this master clip to be able to edit into a surround track so down here below you'll see I have a surround track in my timeline where I've brought something in in this case from Pro Tools and it's one clip object that I can select and play back. So I'm getting six channels from that one clip. I can edit it as one block. And that's really what you're doing. You're selecting uh, channels and tagging them as to what type of surround they are, which then gives you permission to edit it into a surround track. Now, very importantly, you can at any time take that flag off. So if you decided, oh, well, there's some mono uh, tracks in this master clip that I'd like to add in as individual elements, simply remove the flag with modify and you can edit all six or eight channels individually just like before. So very flexible in that regard. The other thing to know is that once we're in a surround sound sequence we actually can tell the system how to monitor it. Notice here we've got the first four tracks which are mono and you can see we have panners here. Let's actually jump down to some something more interesting. How about we go down to this area. So this is tracks 9 through 12 here. So track 12 is actually a stereo track. I've now got two panners. Track 10 is a surround track and you can tell that by the width of the meters there. Let's hit play and we'll uh, see for instance that that's playing back surround. So we have stereo panners here but we're not actually in surround yet and this is the most important new change to the audio mixer. Up at the top here you have a sequence mix format and you have a monitor mix format. The sequence mix format is what your sequence is. Is it a stereo sequence or is it a 5-1 sequence? And by changing that to 5-1 in this case, you'll notice that the panners have just changed now and now I have true surround panners available both for stereo and mono. Very importantly is the monitor mix format. So if I'm in an edit suite and I want to create surround sound, I obviously have to have my sequence set so but my monitor format is flexible. Now I may have a complete surround sound monitoring setup in my edit suite and that's great so I'd have this set to whatever I'm wired for 5.1 and so now I'm getting surround and I'm hearing surround in the suite. But let's say I take this same sequence and I get on a plane and I'm going over to the opposite coast to show my sequence to the producer. Well the system knows at that point that I'm on a laptop and it would automatically set me back to stereo here on my output side and it would fold down the, the rears and, and the sub and everything into stereo so I can continue to edit on the, on the plane and still hear everything. But the most important point of all is that it has not destroyed my surround panning. It's still there and when I get back to the edit suite it's all going to be there. So that's an auto down mix feature that's pretty slick. It also works in reverse. Let's say I'm in my edit suite and I've actually got my speakers wired, say, left, center, right. If I decide to do a stereo production, I go to stereo 
It's very important to leave this in 5.1 because that way my right speaker is actually connected with the correct cable. If I leave these both in stereo and I'm actually wired for surround, I'm not going to get the correct output, uh, the correct speaker on the right side at least. So let's go back and say we want to uh, edit in surround. So we've got our surround mix format set. Um, we'll also say we're going to, uh, and I have a, a little uh, outboard unit here to uh, give me surround outs. So we'll say we're going to be in surround monitor as well. And now we've got our surround panners. And you'll also notice that when I hit play here, over here, I've actually got surround playing out of the output as well. First thing we might want to do is actually pan something in surround. So let's do that. Let's go over here on track nine where this uh, we've got a helicopter and a motorcycle, all fun things to pan around. So let's park here, let's say. And let's go into advanced panning mode, which is clicking on this little button here. And I'm in auto mode here, so I can actually record this as automation. So I'm going to hit record. Actually, I'm set to 7.1. I'll set this back to 5.1. Okay, so all we have to do is hit record, and we can fly the helicopter around. It's kind of stationary right now, so it probably doesn't want to go very far. But as soon as we take off, we'll start flying around. So here we are. So imagine, if you will, that we're flying a helicopter around the city. Okay, and when I hit stop, I've actually got that recorded. And now down in the timeline, we could go and take a look at that data. So here, I have some new places to look at my keyframe data. So several different graphs, but here's front position, for instance. And let's go ahead and play it back, and let's watch over here, and watch when we, uh, when we start moving our position around. And we should see the little surround puck here start to move. And there it goes. So here we are creating surround in, in Media Composer. So it's important to note that we didn't get a lot of requests for doing this. This is a pretty specialist job. You can do it. What we really heard a lot of is we need to be able to monitor surround, meaning somebody else is maybe doing it for us. So this track here is our surround track. This was actually done in Pro Tools. So when I imported that across, I have six channels that are already mixed. The panning was set. And so I have now got the mixed track. I've imported the stem, as it were. And that's why you don't see any uh, panners here, because it is a final mixed track. Now, if I did want to go and remix that and break that up into segments, I can do that. I can go down here into track 10, and I can say, you know what? I want to blow this back out to discrete tracks. I can right click, and I can say split to mono. And that'll split all of this out to discrete channels. You could imagine if you needed to, say, chop up the center channel, take out a voiceover, substitute a different one, you could split it to mono, substitute that track, and then mix it back into surround again with the mix down tool. So now let's take a look at another way of dealing with surround. Let's say, for instance, that you've got Dolby E and you want to be able to decode it or encode it. For someone not familiar with Dolby E, you should know that it's two channels of encoded material representing surround. So it sounds like this, which is not very pleasant. So we definitely want to decode that. We'll go in and use an RTAS plugin from a third party. Here's one from Nyrink. And all we have to do is say the input is the track stream. And instead of hearing that digital noise, we'll hear a decoded Dolby E stream. So you can also see that we have different metadata here traveling along all that stream as well. And in this case, there's actually uh, 5.1 plus a stereo mix in the Dolby stream. We also have uh, another one that bears mentioning, which is Surecode from Minitonka. Same type of deal. You hit play and it just does it for you. And again, all the metadata is there and available. Let's also talk about what you do if you wanted to create surround from non-surround sources. So let's look at this sequence here, which I've just got stereo music playing here. And so what I want to do is show you the upmix plugin. We talked about downmixing when we were uh, listening to our surround in stereo, but we can go the other way as well. So if I've got stereo material, there are uh, tools available out there from our third parties, and this one is uh, from Waves, and it's called UM226, probably because it's up mixing going to into six. So let's hit play. You're not going to be able to hear this, but trust me, it's pretty impressive 
how uh, the algorithms are run to extract stereo and put it in the center channel to make sure the music's in the left and right and, and really create a space, a surround space. So lots of cool uh, presets to play with. So that's a quick look at some of the new surround features in Media Composer, News Cutter, and Symphony.